How does this look? <laughs> are we uh, are we live? Are we live? Namaste then. Namaste friends. There's a friend there, which is great. Hello, first friend. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> good. Listen, before we begin this adventure, we uh, just join us with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Shanti. A prayer for universe of Let's peace. Let's have Ken with us for the Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah. friends. We, we first let's invite our friend Ken uh -huh. to the to the party here. You know, there's something about our music. Uh, we want to introduce you to to uh, Dr. Kenneth Pelletier, and uh, the reason we want to do this whole Facebook uh, chat is because like many of you, we know now that mantras and chanting is a healing uh, adventure. It's a healing thing to do. But uh, we never really looked very closely, uh, uh, you know, as to why or what. And Dr. Ken is a real, he's the Bruce Springsteen of, uh, of uh, alternative medicine. And we're very honored and happy that he would come and hang out with us and explain something of uh, the magic of, of the mantras and uh, to, to open our eyes and our ears to the scientific um, um, part of it all, you know, mm. you know what I mean? So that's why we're here. And like David said, we, I wanted to do Om Shanti, but it's much better to do it with Kenneth. I hope he can sing. We haven't heard him sing yet, but I think Oh, here he can. we have him. Let's see. <laughs> Are you oh, there, Ken? Add you. We just add him to see what happens. How are you guys doing? Anybody, everybody good? We're singing our way to God, shining our light. That's good. <laughs> Barcelona, Brazil. Oh, great. Oh, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. So nice to see you. Mm. Well, maybe while we're waiting, we could sing up Shanti. I, I can. I just tried to add you, and uh, and it says I'm adding you, but uh, nothing's happening. It keeps saying adding. So, anyway. Somebody well, says, how are you, Mitenji? I'm doing great. I'm really doing great. Actually, I'm doing great whether I'm doing great or not. <laughs> it's really just a non... Uh, it's not a question <laughs> anymore. I'm just doing great. Thanks. <laughs> but, you know... Um, Connection failed. You know, one of the things we wanted to say was, if you do have any questions for Ken, uh, Dr. Valetia, then... Uh, and. Uh, how they've affected your life. In some ways, if you have questions that David can't answer, then he's your man. He's the guy. I just hope we can get him online. He, he's there. I just don't know why it's not happening. I, it says um, he's being added as we speak. Well, he'll, but, be, he'll um, come in like the Lone Ranger in a minute. Some of you might have seen our rehearsals just now and uh, can try again. <laughs> we try again. We're gonna try again. Okay. It says can't bring you because there's already another guest, but there is no other guest. Uh -huh. We'll try again. So this is the power of connection. <laughs> Seen a lot of rain. <laughs> Ken has a book called change your genes change your life which yeah. i'm very much looking forward to reading it's not out yet and uh, as we try to just uh, get this together we realize that it's much easier to change your phone because yeah. we've had so much trouble with these phones trying to get this together and we thought we did but now it's obviously not working as we thought and uh, so, uh let's sing It keeps saying it's adding you can, but it doesn't do anything. It just keeps blinking, adding. And Maybe uh, an Om Shanti would uh, kind of manifest. Let me see yeah. because Navesha, I don't. Okay. 
So nice to see you all from coming from so many different countries. That's beautiful. From Mexico and Spain and Brazil. Yeah. You know, one time we, we were at a conference uh, with the Dalai Lama. I think I've told many of you this little story, but uh, it was a conference that brought together Tibetan spirituality and scientific exploration. And so the the uh, convention was uh, with the Dalai Lama, His Holiness, and the whole uh, collection of really an interest in uh, scientists. And they spent the weekend talking and sharing. And we were there, of course, to, to play a concert. And uh, that's what made us really interested in this whole thing, because we, when we began, we didn't think of it as something that was healing necessarily that's not what we not i mean it basically we didn't know we didn't we couldn't really articulate it but we knew that it deepened our meditation and that was enough for both of us that's why we, that's why we were with our show anyway and that's why we were in Pune in india we were there learning how to meditate mm -hmm. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and the music uh when we heard the music in the ashram <laughs> <laughs> it was that's not the music that we heard connection failed look it's uh you guys are very very sweet and anyway patient. let me just finish that yeah. thing because there's no, nothing you can do now ashram we didn't see it as healing but we saw it as deepening the silence and uh osho had a um, hey there he is hey man oh my god hey, <laughs> look at that smile <laughs> here at last uh, fast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we were just hi. Yeah, this is Ken, <laughs> Dr. Kenneth. <laughs> Namaste, Ken. Namaste. Nice to see. You. Namaste. We were. It's so good to be with you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much for taking the time. This is mm -hmm. special for us. You know, uh, we were just saying to people that we know the power of mantra and the chanting, but we don't have any scientific explanation for it. You know we uh we we're kind of mavericks in that uh and so we're <laughs> happy to have you so that you can explain uh and help us to to move deeper into the power so as you can see we have many friends joining us and also i feel like yes. we should we should have only doctors like you in the world you know like people who are really grounded in both mm. worlds and um and who know you know, the, the, the metaphysical as well as the physical. And it's so great to have you on board and um, really looking forward to reading your book, Change Your Genes, Change Your Life, because that's, that's amazing. Like just to have it scientifically um, based that, that we are not, that we are free, you know, like it's basically the, the yeah. yes. and we always say when we sing the mantras, when we sing, when we close our eyes, we are really free. There's nobody who can, you know, there's nobody who can interfere with that space. We are totally on our own and in our own mm -hmm. sky. So to have that, to have that scientifically based is, is great. And uh, I wanted to introduce you, but you have so many amazing um, titles and, and uh, <laughs> names and all that. And I thought maybe it would be beautiful if you could just say something about yourself for those of us who don't know you. So when... Well, I'm a, a clinical professor of medicine at the University of California School of Medicine here in San Francisco. I've written maybe 10 or 12 books, uh, do research predominantly on integrative medicine, which is exactly what you're talking about, which is how we bridge between the hard sciences and the meditative spiritual disciplines. And there is, there is a bridge that does exist and I've been a fan of your music for a long time and uh, my real credential is I'm an avid open ocean sailor so very often when I'm sailing I'm listening to your music so your your work your music has been a, a very integral part of my life so I'm, I'm just delighted to have this this time together and anything that you know that we can add from a scientific perspective it's not reduced to any of the spirituality and the qualities in your music. 
I think that's very important. There is the level of metaphysics and there's a level of science and to not try to reduce the, uh, the grandeur, the spirituality of your music, your chanting and the effects on people to science. I mean, there is a scientific basis, but one is not reducible. And, and that to me is the wonder and the beauty of, of what you've always done. We, uh, we, we like to, to say to people, you know, when we chant the mantras, don't worry if you don't understand the meaning of the mantra or if you, if you, you know, don't get hung up with that. It's, it's like a, a pill that David likes to say. It's like taking a pill for a headache. You don't need to know what's in the pill for the pill to work. And, uh, That's you know, somehow for us, we, we, we like, we like to, we like this uh, open, um, um, it's, it's, it's very much, I mean, it is focused, but at the same time, we are very much uh, open to the magic. And uh, what, what's your, what's, what, I know that you love Gregorian chant so much. And, uh, and, yes. and I also uh, know that uh, you like the, the Native American chanting also. Uh, it doesn't necessarily yes. have to do with, with the content or, or not, or what? It doesn't, because um, I've, I grew up as a, a Roman, a French Roman Catholic altar boy. <laughs> so I was introduced to the Gregorian chanting and to the incense and I, and Latin. And I, I could barely understand the Latin at the time, but it was the intonation mm. and the vibration and the sensory involvement of the whole experience that I find was profoundly spiritual. And then, you know, as I've now studied it over time, what you realize is that your chants, your, your music, your compositions have a profound impact on the brain. Uh, and and in, in a, just as one instance, uh, when people listen to your music, and certainly when you are both performing, um, your brain is in synchrony. The two halves of your brain uh, fall into harmony. So the left and the right, the intellectual and the intuitive, the, the factual and the, the context are really working together, uh, which is an, a very unusual state. And what we call the kind of the sensory the high is really the sides of the brain becoming synchronous. Mm -hmm. Um, and also the front to the back, the frontal lobes and the anterior lobes become synchronous. So the whole brain is more in harmony when people are listening to music, certainly when they're performing or chanting with you. It's a very, very profound change in the whole body, the physiology of the whole body then follows and it changes from a destructive state, a catabolic state where we're energizing, burning up energy in order to be alert, to engage in stress, to engage in combat, changes from that to what's called anaerobic. So we're literally changing into a regenerative uh, state. And what I found is that when you listen to the Gatu monks, when you listen to Native American chanting, uh, the uh, the Buddhist uh, monks, the Cochrane, the uh, uh, other kinds of chanting, they all have similar qualities to them. And there's a resonance that produces this effect independently of understanding uh, the mm -hmm. words. And there's also something about the vagus and the, or the parasympathetic nerve system, like something that relaxes, like what was that? Tell me. Yes, yeah, that's very good. Um, well, you know, my early research was at a time when we believed there were two separate nervous systems, mm -hmm. an autonomic nervous system and a voluntary nervous system. They were parallel tracks, but that didn't make, this is in the early 70s, that didn't make sense because there are times when we have a bridge between them. So for instance, you can hold your breath, but only for so long. And then that's a voluntary nervous system activity. Then suddenly you have to, get your breath. And that's an autonomic reaction. So something about that didn't make sense to me. So I studied a series of med adept meditators. Uh, and these were people who could inflict uh, horrible wounds. In, in one instance, a man who could push a sharpened bicycle spoke uh, entire, entirely through his uh, forearm. 
And uh, when he was meditating, it looked as though he was sitting on a beach uh, having a good time. You didn't see any uh, stress response. And what he told me was that it wasn't that the pain went away. It changed from a sharp shooting and distracting pain to feeling as though he was pressing on his own arm with his own finger. Wow. Um, and when you looked at what was occurring, the vagus nerve, which is the connection between the brain, the heart, and the central nervous system, got very, very quiet during his meditations. Yeah. When he was not meditating, we would ask him deliberately, don't meditate. Uh -huh. And we'd do something like a little finger prick. And he would react with pain, just as uh -huh. any of us would. But in his deep meditations, he could, he did not bleed. He did not create infections. There was no trauma. And then we had about seven or eight other people that we studied over time. And that was the, the beginning of the mind body, that it isn't a matter of mind over matter. It's that mind matters and that there's a profound connection between them. So that was the, the basis of, of my research back then. And, and, and it continues. The new book is a continuation of that, but now on a genetic level. Yeah. Same events. Yeah. Just, sorry. I was just going to ask you about autistic people because we we've, we've been uh, we play a few times for autistic uh, kids and it has uh, a real strong strong uh, effect and, and response from the from yes. the guys and also uh, from uh, teachers of, or carers of autistic kids who tell us when they when they play the uh, especially the gayatri mantra that from you know for yes. me that I, I don't know much about it but for me that gayatri is so deep and so ancient and strong and powerful uh you know i've just seen so many incredible uh experiences you know of of, of healing and of, of of connection somehow through through the gayatri and yes. and you know so i i don't you know, like i say scientifically i don't know why that is but i know when people tell me um one of the oh, kids I look after, uh, you know, has, has clocked it and wants that song and asks for it now. And, uh, you know, that, that so again, it, I guess we're talking about, uh, you know, some reasons that personally I don't know, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, you know, music is vibration. Yeah. And the human body is a biomagnetic system. It's very, very sensitive to environmental vibration, to sound, to toxins, to air quality, to the sounds of the ocean. So we're very much acoustically oriented and we're just a, a swim in a, in a biomagnetic field. So when you chant, your music changes that resonance. You produce a higher level of resonance. It's uniform. I know when you have people chant with you, when you perform, I mean, collectively, that's an astounding event that happens for people. So with autism, a part of the brain, the left brain, if you will, is not working very well. That's almost inherently the nature of autism. But the right brain and the subliminal brain, the cortex area, that's perfectly functional. That's what you're reaching with your music. That's why the children respond. And sometimes they even will start speaking or they'll start singing. So artistic children love harmonies, they love singing, though so it's a part of the brain that's not intellectual that we then overvalue mm -hmm. in our culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much more profound than that. It's much more basic in, in its appreciation of the world. That's what you're tapping, uh, tapping into. That's what you're eliciting uh, in them. When I listen to your, your harmonics, I can feel the vibration. I'm sure all of your, the people that follow you, 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 you emit a frequency that is inherently uplifting for people. Mm -hmm. It's a quite, it's a, an amazing gift that you have. You know, I just heard some other research, which totally is against this. <laughs> I heard that, uh, <laughs> that they found out now that any music that you like has that effect. So whatever you like, even if it's, heavy metal or whatever, rap, rap or whatever, <laughs> whatever music you like will have that same effect if you like it. Do you think that's true? Like it's not about the music itself, it's just your response to it. If you like it, it has a good effect on you. 
I think there's probably some truth to that, but I can't believe that heavy metal or violent rock has the same effect as your chanting. That just doesn't make sense. So there's, there's the resonance, if you will, and I think people uniformly, universally respond to the harmonies and the resonance. Um, but then there's a, a departure. There's one that takes you higher into higher states of consciousness, like you hear with the Gayatu monks of the Tibetan monks or the American, the Navajo chants or the Hindu chants. Uh, but then there are others that, that bring you lower. They bring you into a lower state of harmonic. There's violence and darkness and, and that is equally real. And uh, I think liking at that point begins to deteriorate and the music really has an impact beyond whether you like it or not. There's an effect, but it's not desirable mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's been incredible um, to receive messages from people <clears throat> and it's happened, I think in our time, maybe 10 times where people actually said they were close to suicide and, and they would ah. listen just by chance to a mantra. Somebody said, maybe check this out. And just by listening, there would be some transformation, some light that was felt again or some light that felt like oh it's worth living and and like a, like with the autistic children like with no um no knowledge of what what we're singing no knowledge of the mantras or the meaning and uh, that's what i find especially powerful if it really is it's not a placebo thing it's 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 a real direct effect on our bodies and on our whole inner world oh absolutely it's not definitely not a placebo um and uh the effect on depression is really profound um you know electroshock therapy which was violent when it was first developed is now coming back into vogue and it's a different kind of electroshock but it delivers electromagnetic frequencies to the brain and it in fact is an effective cure for depression where people just cannot rally themselves out of depression has become an effective uh, treatment and that is a form of resonance if you think about it you're introducing a biomagnetic frequency into the brain that helps the brain the person to rouse out of depression and i think when people listen to music that is uplifting that's positive that has a spiritual dimension it's like when you listen to the words of a great teacher when you listen to the words of the dalai lama uh there he, when he speaks in tibetan i actually prefer him in the Tibetan because I feel the resonance and the clarity and the rhythm of his native language. That's not there when he speaks English. It's very much, as you know, a second language for him. But when he speaks in, in his Tibetan dialect, it's astounding. And again, it has that uplifting effect that your music has as well. And what, what do you feel about um, repetition? You know, because mantra is you know, the, the, the big thing is the repetition, you know, and it's, it's one thing is that we repeat, by repeating something, we are breathing in a certain rhythm, basically, it's, a, it's, it's pranayama, it's like a yogic breathing, unconsciously, we're yes. doing it, you know, because it's the same, you know, the I mean, same. That's one of the so, biggest things is that when you get, yeah, like, uh, I, I, again, you're really, sorry, go ahead, Mita. No, I was just going to say, you know, that's that's really one of the big things for us that we notice because we play to many people and we realize, wow, we're all breathing unconsciously in the same place. Yes. And uh, that creates yeah. such a, a harmonious uh, 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 atmosphere yeah. between us all, you know. Mm. It does. And, and again, breathing is that middle ground between the autonomic and the voluntary nervous system. So you can hold your breath for a period of time, but then you have to breathe. You're, you're, if you become oxygen deprived, your body. Oh. No, don't go away. Oh, this. Oh, I had a really good question coming up. <laughs> maybe shall we see if we can? Uh... Three. We never sang them shanty, did we? No. <laughs> Oh, Sorry. No, yeah, no, you're back. Great. Hey. I'm back. There was a message that came through. <laughs> From the divine? 
Oh, we've had a good time <laughs> trying to get this going, haven't we? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but respiration is, is a critical uh, function. And when you are breathing in a harmonic way, all of the electrical activity in the body changes, drops down into a lower, more harmonic frequency. So when we're going about our daily activities, when we're thinking and, uh, you know, paying bills and doing whatever we do, the frequency is very fast in the brain and the frequencies in the body are very disjointed. Um, they're very disharmonious. But when we stop, when we meditate, when we listen to music, when we perform music, the whole mind-body system becomes harmonic. And then it comes in our breath, comes in different kinds of of cycles. We actually monitored the patterns of breathing in these adept meditators, and we found that there were very unique abdominal reflexive breathing that took place during their deep meditations uh, that were so unique and so characteristic that we actually charted them and published that as part of our, our study. Yeah, yeah, I can hear that. Um, can I ask you about, uh, you know, I recently had a heart operation, open heart surgery yes and uh yeah. they talked about it being hereditary uh and but i noticed in your one of your talks you were talking about a gene says fluid and dynamic and that that it 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 transcends that that uh hold that uh that it that hereditary issues have is that is that am i right there yes um you know i think now the the current understanding um, of the genes is that they determine everything about who we are, your height, your weight, your eye color, uh, the diseases you'll get, how long we will live, et cetera. That's a misconception. And uh, genes are, genes do not change. So there are certain, our genes do not change, but what does change is whether they're expressed or suppressed. So in your case, you may have had a genetic predisposition. I don't know what the bi what your bypass surgery was was for or its extent, but probably there was a genetic predisposition that you had from early on in your life. But you may have staved off needing surgery or having a fatal heart attack until your current age because of everything else you've done with your life. You're obviously not overweight. I assume you don't smoke, um, you know, you, and, and you're fit and you're happy and you're engaged in life. All of those things would mitigate against a heart attack gene being expressed in your life. Uh, so an, a, another person who would have the same genetic imprint uh, if they didn't exercise, if they were unhappy, if they were overweight, high stress, that will bring on an early heart attack and very, very predictable. So the, the point is, is that now what we're realizing is that we'll call epigenesis or the, G, the above the gene, that everything about uh, our life, stress, meditation, the environment, our friends, uh, closeness to others, our relationships, have a profound influence. In fact, uh, James Watson of the Watson and Crick discovery of the DNA in 1954, he was the first person to have his genome completely mapped about five years ago. And he has a statement, I, I have, had, have it in my book, that if he took that information to his, his or her family doctor, uh, that he or she would know one to 3% more one to three percent more about his health than if they just did a good physical. Uh -huh. Now, one to three percent—that's uh -huh. astounding. And and uh, the last thing is that with all of our chronic diseases, ninety percent, maybe more, of our chronic diseases are all epigenetic. There's, there are very few what they call monogenic diseases that show up in the first six to nine months of life. Everything else is we all carry a genetic predisposition to long life, to certain tastes, to certain heights, certain everything, that is all malleable. We are changing, as we're speaking right yeah. now, we are changing our genetic expression literally right now. <laughs> that to me is That's phenomenal. Amazing. You know, one of the things that Dave and I like to do every morning before we start our day is to shake our bodies for 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, it, made, yes. it made me 
think about the genes and what's happening because it just becomes it shakes, shakes up the genes. It just shakes, <laughs> yeah. It just shakes everything up. It's like a. It feels like there's a fluid. Uh, fluid, fluid movement in the whole body by the time I finish. Which I feel is really, it must be good it's for me, you know. I, it is. Well, I've watched your video of you doing that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and, and, yeah, well, you, you're obviously having fun. Yeah. And, and, and you're definitely grounding into the earth. Yeah. And I like how you say you basically channel the energy from the earth, but you also threw you in out. So anything that's troublesome or negative or problematic, you're dissipating that out into the, the universe. Yeah. That's a beautiful uh, form of meditation. Like I said, you look like you're having fun. And we do know that laughing, as soon as you smile, as soon as you laugh, your body shifts into an anabolic regenerative state. So you go from being destructive and, and, and disarray to one that's harmonious and, and, uh, and regenerative yeah. as soon as you smile. Yeah, well, when you're not, not going to have a problem, problem with that. You know that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the what? The Botox? Yeah, like they, they made this because there's this thing that even if you smile and it's not for real, if you, if you smile, just, if you just lift your, the corners of your mouth, but you're not yes. actually meaning it as a smile. Even that takes, like, um, increases that hormone. But if you have Botox, it doesn't. Don't tell everybody that. No, but it's That's true. There's a, a researcher here at UCSF School of Medicine that actually took patients who were depressed and monitored naloxone, which is a natural, a naturally occurring opiate in the body. Uh, so when we have when we have pain, we we emit naloxone in the body and it's basically a pain regulator. And what he did is he asked them to smile, even if they didn't feel happy. He said, just smile. And what they found is that naloxone levels went up. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the, <laughs> so, the Dalai Lama. Yeah, I thought that was fascinating. It's fascinating. I, I, I was just reminded, I like, that the Dalai Lama, when asked about uh, the, the qualities of of spirituality, he said that humor was very one of the most important. We yes. used to have, uh, yeah. we had a, a, our guru in India, he had this meditation where we would laugh for one week for three hours every morning. We would go in a room and we would, we would laugh until we couldn't laugh, until we laughed at the fact that we uh -huh. were trying to laugh. And that meditation went on for three weeks. The first week laughing, sec second week was crying and the release of that. And the third week was Vipassana and sitting in silence for, for the three hours. It's an amazing three weeks of my life. That must have been. What was the effect of that? I'm curious. I mean, that's an astounding meditation. It, it, uh, it's, I'm the result of it. I am the result. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I can't speak for anyone else, but for me, it was uh, it was one of those transformative uh, experiences, you know, just to be focused, just just to be in a room with a bunch of people who were trying to laugh mm -hmm. was enough to uh, make you crazy, you know, and uh, and 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 the laughter that the, the irrational laughter for no reason at all would just spark, and then the whole room would be howling with laughter. And no, <laughs> nobody, you know, so that release was incredible. And I also found that the release for the crying was the same as the laughter. When I was in deep tears, yeah. it was the same. I could switch from laughter to tears very easily in that, in that environment. Yes. But the most profound, of course, was to sit in silence for after that for the last week and, uh, and then go about your, because it was in the ashram, so the whole environment was yes. geared for meditation and self-discovery but somebody just actually mentioned that they were just doing mystic rose that's called the mystic rose yeah, it, it. It. Uh, so uh, somebody says uh, i've had a heart uh, attack in april can i see that uh and feeling grief for this planet and future life mm. going to your show here was part of my recovery from Good. that thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, so, great uh, is there do you guys have, have you noticed Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I was just going to ask, going back to your, your surgery, your, your, your bypass, um, what effect did that have on you? I mean, has it had, I would assume it's a very profound 
effect of life affirmation or a different uh, uh, perspective? I'm, yeah? I'm not the same guy who went into that art. Everything, uh, in what way? Everything's changed. Uh, <laughs> not everything. No, I uh, feel like everything's changed. I feel like I've been reborn into these last years and uh, as opposed to uh, counting years or or whatever i was doing before i feel uh, like i'm seeing life through the eyes of an innocent child again and uh, it feels well, good yeah. <laughs> you know i have a lot yeah. more energy in my body uh, and um, which can be good or bad because sometimes i i you know i can easily overstep the mark right now <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, yeah. that's part of my life anyway. I, 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 I like to, uh, I like, I, I like to let a little craziness exist. I think that's what, that's what brings some joy into into life. So, um, I'm not so afraid of upsetting people, or I like to say what I really mean. And uh, these huh? these are qualities that I I knew about before, and I thought that. I I was doing that, but I realized now I was more of a child. I feel like I'm, I've I've moved into these last years, but I'm a baby in it. I'm like a baby old man, you know. I'm sort of learning to adjust to to my body and to the the perspective of these last years of my life, you know. So it's very interesting, and uh, I've become a better guitar player too. <laughs> and I mean, have you seriously? Have you really more feeling? Yeah, just a little more presence. Yeah. more presence. I'm, I'm. Uh, you know, it's it's just a, it's it's such a delicate thing. But but I I can feel my finger on the strings and on the wood in a in a in a more uh, profound way than before. And it's a sweeter yeah. it's a sweeter sound that I'm I'm loving to play. Somebody just said they feel exactly okay. the same. Leon Edwards, that's beautiful. A four-way bypass in 2003 and felt the same. Now I feel positive, alive, and at ease. Interesting, isn't it? Amazing. Well, you've literally been uh, reborn. Yeah. I mean, you know, every meditation tradition talks about a wisdom of the heart. Yeah. We tend to think that wisdom only resides in the mind. And they talk about a wisdom of the heart. And, you know, going back to this bridge between the ancient wisdom and modern science at, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, they have a device, it's called, a, the acronym is SQUID, a Sub Quantum Interference Detector or SQUID. And it shields the human body from all known external radiation and electromagnetics. And they wanted to see, could they detect emanations from the human body? Was there an energy field that all of the healers and psychics and mystics always talk about? Was that really true or not? And this was probably 20 some odd years ago. Uh, when they did the first study, what they found is the most powerful emanation from the human body was from the heart. <laughs> and what this is, a, this is a totally straight scientific article. They really didn't know what they were saying. But when they, they said it's what they described it further, they said it's a vortex. And it was a clockwise spinning vortex emanating from the human heart. Wow. <laughs> The chakra. The chakra. It's the chakra. It's the chakra. So I thought that was, uh, yeah, I thought that was astounding. So you've re-stimulated, reinvigorated, reborn your your heart chakra. Didn't they also, sorry, didn't, mm, sure. didn't they also find out that there is more information going from the heart to the brain uh, rather than from the brain to the heart? That there's a bigger flow of information on in the nerves going from the heart to the brain than the other way around. I believe that. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the, I, you know, what, I mean, we're finding out that you know, in Western science, we tend to identify with our brain, cognition, thought. And every system of meditation teaches us we're not our thoughts. Yeah. You know, this is not real. This is all made up. We're creating a reality that we share with other people, but it's not, not real. And what we're discovering scientifically is the whole intestinal tract system. So they call it the brain gut connection, that there's so much going on in our entire digestive tract from mouth to anus that has a trillion cells. So there are more cells in that system than in the entire human body. And the intestinal tract has a profound impact. So what we eat, 
uh, how we breathe, uh, you know, what we ingest from the air, from foods, has a profound impact on our cognition, on our thoughts. And there's even some research looking now that changes in the human intestinal tract predispose us to uh, Alzheimer's uh, or brain cognitive dysfunction. Um, so we're, we're, we're starting to realize that we are a system. We are really a mind-body system immersed in this beautiful environment. And that unless we understand all of those factors, unless we live fully aligned with those things, we're not healthy. Hmm. We're just not experiencing our optimal states of health. Hmm. Somebody just asked, why is the squid not being used all over the world to, to clean us of the EMFs and protect us from the EMFs? That's interesting. I don't, I haven't followed that research. I don't know what they've done uh, subsequently, but to me, the detection of the fields is less important that it confirms the wisdom of certain healing traditions oh, it's, it's that speak about the yeah. body. That's yeah. A it's, so it's a detection device. It's not a treatment device. Uh, but what it does is it gives us license to take seriously the fact that we are subtle electromagnetic biochemical systems. We're not these closed frames, uh, you know, encased in our skin against all, mm. all the environment. Mm. We are constantly in interaction with, with the two of you right now, uh, with our friends. When you're in concert, I'm sure you're connected to your audience in ways that are profound for them and for you. That's, that's part of health. Mm. That is part of a, a truly optimal state. Mm. Connection. That's really the, the connection is yeah. the... Yeah. I like Leonard, yeah. I like Leonard Cohen's description: a brief elaboration of a tube. That's I mean, that's in one of his songs. You know, if you can get that in a song, then, my God, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's quite a line. Yeah. How do you select your music? How do you select your your chance we that don't. you do. We just, uh, we just um, basically rely on Deva, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but she comes to us with uh, mantras or particular mantras that uh, she she wants to chant, and then uh, and then somehow it manifests in a way that feels appropriate to the emotion or the uh, meaning of the mantra. That's basically. Uh, that's basically how we do it. With the songs, of course, it's different. The songs are um, descriptive. They're part of my life. I used to just write songs that uh, basically were songs of devotion. I was in India and uh, my guru had just transformed my life. So every song was saying thank you in some way to the guru. And uh, after he left his body and life moved on and times changed. No, I was saying, saying thank you to me. No, I'm saying thank you to Deva. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's it's true, isn't it? Yeah. But <laughs> still, basically, it's still, it, it does, it, the root is gratitude. The root is gratitude. And I, as much as I can, I encourage people to remember to be grateful for this moment, mm -hmm. especially when we're together in community and we're singing together. You know, this doesn't happen so often. We can go to Russia and sing to thousands and thousands of people. It's historic in a way that mm -hmm. we would be gathered to sing Sanskrit mantras in Moscow. Uh, but these, uh, these moments are, are absolutely precious, not just to Deva and, and me, but to everybody there and to be reminded of, of that fact and to be grateful for this moment is very important and just uh you know that in itself can open the voice it can open the heart and the harmony becomes even richer and even deeper and more profound you know because for me it's music it's it has to the music yeah. carries so much uh and to have the music married to these ancient healing sounds the mantras is it's just phenomenal you know it's not like we're singing uh you know i love you baby or you you left me last night and i don't love you anymore you know it's like way beyond that emotion it's not emotional at all and when david chants there's no emotion so it's a pure expression of uh, of what i 
take to you know to be healing it's a healing environment I agree. You know, i think that's why my heart one of the reasons my heart repaired so fast it was it's almost like a dream you know that it all happened i've, I've just got the scar to prove that it actually did happen <laughs> <laughs> that's a good reminder it's a good reminder yeah <laughs> <laughs> somebody just asked a question um uh, it's a it's an interesting question. Uh, when when you say clockwise that it turned clockwise the the, the heart, is it from yes. the perspective on, of the onlooker or from within? Oh, that's a good question. From the onlooker. Oh, okay. So when you're looking at the person, it was a clockwise turning uh, vortex from the point of view of the observer. Okay, because I always always wondered that. So we don't have that much time left. Yeah. In if somebody has question oh. for Ken uh, concert in India we don't we don't have any plans right now that's one question any uh, any interesting question for Ken for well, the whole thing? maybe maybe Kenneth you'd just like to uh, tell us about your book and the title of it so that uh, you know people can go and check it out because if we don't do it now we'll probably forget mm -hmm. so uh, <laughs> well thank you the title is change your genes change your life and the change your genes is really just a catchy phrase because as we talked about earlier, you can't. Your genes are invariant. And the analogy I use in the book is a Shakespearean play of Hamlet. It's been performed by Richard Burton and Kenneth Branagh and, and it's very different each time it's performed, but the play itself is invariant. So our genes are invariant, but it's how we play them, how we express them, what we do. Uh, day in and day out. And and so the book basically is what do we know about diet, the impact, and, and diet has a huge impact on genetic expression, whether it's going to have, you know, have inflammation or not is dependent on diet. Meditation has a huge impact. Uh, what we know is that in, in periods of time, 10 to 12 weeks of meditation will actually restore and elongate the telomeres. And the telomeres are an indication of how long we will live. <clears throat> so as, as, the, as, we, as cells replicate the, the ends of these little telomeres, which are like shoelaces, tend to fray. And they become more and more frayed until finally the information is not there and then the gene and the body dies. But we know in periods of meditation that the telomeres actually reignite. They actually re-knit themselves. So we are actually literally extending our life expectancy during meditation. Wow. So you've got many more years ahead of you, Mitan. So, I mean, meditation is yeah. so boring that it feels like loads of years. Because it's, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the other side of it. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> it, it was it, as, as I was finishing the book <clears throat> with the, uh, one of the astronauts who spent the longest period of time in space which they turned to, to Earth. And he has a twin brother who was also an astronaut. So they compared the genes of the twin brother who had been on the Earth as an astronaut and the an astronaut who'd been in space during this one year time interval. And what they found was that 7% of the genetic expression of the person who had been in space had changed. 7%, that's huge. If you think about the fact there's less than 1%, that differentiates us from the chimpanzees. So to have 7% expression change in a year is astounding. One of the things that changed was the telomeres elongated. So he actually literally created a longer life expectancy for himself. Now that will probably all go back to normal and baseline, but it shows how profound these changes can be in a relatively right. short time. So the book is really very practical. It says here what we know about dietary impact, meditation impact, friends, uh, we know that people who have friends or close relationships have greater health status, live longer, fewer diseases, et cetera. And so it, it really is very practical. And the last part just talks about what we call personalized medicine, which is in within the next year, we will have genetic blood and biomic. So it's like the blueprint is the gene. The uh, uh, basically blood is like the house. And the biome is like what it's like to live in the house. And we will have very inexpensive, non-invasive assays that'll be available to the public. So you will be able to know who am I biochemically. Yeah. 
And then the whole, all the controversy about high fat diet, low fat diet, this kind of meditation, that kind of exercise will go by the wayside because we will know precisely who are we as the experiential body, the experiential wow. being for all of these influences. That to me is, is very exciting. And that will be within the next year. We're really going to have a kind of uh, what personalized medicine is the phrase yeah. that's used. And it, to me, it's, it's very, very exciting. Oh, yeah. Somebody's asking. And that's where the book ends. <laughs> that's where the book ends. Oh, yeah. begins. Yeah. Somebody's asking, so the way you switch on and off your genes or deactivate or activate your genes, do you pass it on to your children? That's interesting. Um, yes. And there's even some, again, this is, this whole area of genetics is fascinating. There's even some research that shows the genetic qualities of a grandparent that are not, do not show up in the child of the grandparent, show up in the grandchild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is, there was a study that was just done that looked at obesity in the maternal grandmother. The daughter was not obese, didn't have any impact on her. But when you looked at the female grandchild, it predicted almost 100% if that child was going to be obese or not. Wow. It's astounding. So sometimes the genes will actually skip yeah. generations. I've seen that uh, with, and, with my own yeah. grandchildren. I've seen uh, that's and, and my own son. He's so much like his grandfather, but they never, they never oh, met. See? You know, that, that uh, he was dead before my son was born. But they're so alike, it's incredible. Yeah, but then, like, if the parent works on, them, works on that, so it, it like, like, enhances the good genes and turns off the bad ones, will that have an effect onto the child? Yes. And that, that's where the, you know, the, the work that we're all engaged in, which is co raising consciousness. Mm -hmm. And the whole intent of, of any of these books or publications is simply so that we realize the power of choice. Mm -hmm that we're, we're putting the person back in the center of our universe rather than being victims of, of poverty or violence or the environment. We really are placing the ability to influence our future on ourselves. And that, that to me is a, you know, very optimistic. Every meditation tradition in that kind of moment of silence that we achieve internally, and then we emanate from there, this is a reflection of that in science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So when is it going to be out? September. September. Great. You know, Somebody said, is it going yeah. to be in German as well? I don't know. Um, it is apparently, you know, I've, I've, my last book was almost seven or eight years ago, and so much has changed. It used to be New York Times and major television shows. Now it's all internet. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's all web-based marketing, and they tell me that if a book reaches thirty thousand copies on Amazon that then it's a candidate for uh, international translation. So I guess oh, it's going to <laughs> wait and see. <laughs> my other books have been in German and Chinese and Japanese. And, and this is my 13th book. So uh, a lot of the other ones have been in multiple languages. It's kind of fun yeah. when you, you know, to see them in, in different yeah. languages. So, so plenty to check out there. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, okay. good. I'd like to know what you think. We should have another conversation yeah, about what you're sure. you know, yes. looking at. I was telling you just uh, one, one uh, uh, memory I have now that you triggered, and that is with the Gayatri Mantra. And uh, after the operation, I had some really intense traumatic uh, experiences that the body was going through. Not, it was this, it, I realized that, you know, you could be put to sleep, but the body was intelligence was still there and uh, I could feel that it was really uh, I couldn't sleep I'd panic whenever I went to sleep because I just my body would not it just didn't know what was happening and I had a one night in particular many 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 hours all the way through the night of crying very intense uh, tears and howling of of anguish and everything but it, I could feel that it was releasing this trauma and um, yeah. There was a moment before dawn when I said to Deva, uh, we've just made a new album, by the way. By the way, you guys, it will be coming out soon. It's mm -hmm. coming out in uh, October, I think. 
and it's a, a new beautiful beautiful mantra of of uh, beautiful arm of of De just deva and the mantras uh, and uh, the gayatri mantra is on that album also and it's uh, it's uh, it's the extended version that goes through all the chakras and i said to deva put this put this on i need i need our medicine uh, and uh, so she put this gayatri mantra on and uh, it was incredible how much peace and resonance it brought into the room and within a little while we curled up both of us and we drifted off into the most beautiful sleep um, and we awoke yeah. we awoke refreshed mm -hmm. you know and uh, so so you know that's the kind of thing I'm experiencing you know and I, I can only think there must have been scientific exploration involved in these charts thousands of years ago when they were first being discovered you know that's very true as you know in the tibetan tradition they have something called the abhidharma which is the like a periodic table of consciousness oh, yeah. and at the intersection of all of those squares of the periodic table the abhidharma is a particular meditative posture a particular chant and it's meant to elicit a very explicit state uh fear aggression love compassion and the whole point of the meditative traditions is that we experience those so we can see witness and be free of that and you know your body is expressing the trauma i mean having heart surgery is a major trauma and your body has to expel that in the way i'm sure you're shaking in the mornings were very different uh after your surgery because you do need to expel that trauma your body has a mind there is a consciousness whether intellectually we're functioning at the time your body knows a great deal more than we give ourselves credit for mm -hmm. absolutely that's why i sing you know, yeah that's, that's what, why i sing yeah. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 very nice so somebody said what's the name of the album it's going to be called deva just deva. deva is it really <laughs> no messing around this one it's just deva we didn't even think to put a title there <laughs> It's the most amazing. Huh. Very and it'll be out in October. It's coming out uh, soon. Of October, it's so. finished now. We're just, uh, you know, it's just in the um, uh, process of, you know, going to the factory and uh, all that. But it's I think another, yeah, another very baby. Funny. We just yeah. keep, we don't make babies. We make CDs, you know. <laughs> Well, you've been very prolific. I know, I know. Well, I would have been even more prolific if I wasn't making CDs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it would be nice to, to end with a chant or a little... It would be beautiful if we could... Or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ken. This was so enjoyable. So oh. great. Thank you for taking the time with us and... Oh, thank you both. Well, after all the technology glitches we had yesterday and today, I'm glad it happened. But this has been delightful. Yeah, thank so you. Good. Thank you both. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see what what you come up with. Uh, what do you What do you want? Do you want to to chant the gayatri? Yeah. It's, it's, uh... <clears throat> and thank you, friends, for joining. It's been thank so you, guys. to see your hearts and your comments. And uh, I'm sure we'll do this again. <clears throat> we can all join together with the Om Mantra and in the end with Om Shanti, Shanti Shanti, which is a prayer for universal peace.
Tatsavi turva inyo Argo divasya vimani Iyo yona prachodaya Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Have a beautiful day and uh, please stay connected. Indeed. Thank you. Namaste. Love you guys. Mm -hmm. See you. <laughs>